right? This is just a simple little introduction to the concept of what's called an electric field. Um, so most of us learned in middle school things like uh, if you have, say, two positive charges, they repel, or two negative charges, they repel, or if you have a positive and negative or opposite charges, they attract, right? So just building from that, suppose you do have a positive charge here, and I take another positive charge over here that happens to have uh, twice the charge. So let's call it plus two cube. And I put that one over here at some distance away, right? So here's this distance away and I'll call the distance R, right? If I wanted to find the force on this charge, right? Then we would use uh, Coulomb's law. And so then the force on that, that's on this charge over here would be uh, Coulomb's constant K times the first charge um, times the second charge, which would be 2q, right, and then divided by the distance squared. So that's, that's Coulomb's law. And then, of course, you would know that in this case, the force would be away because it's, a, um, it's another positive charge. They're like charges, right? Well, so then if we modify this and we decide, no, you know what, instead of a plus 2q charge there, I would put a, let's say, minus 20 Q charge, okay? So I just make that up. Um, so I decide to swap that out, and I make this minus 20 Q. So a big negative charge, right? You notice that as far as calculating the strength of the force, all I have to do is only modify this part, right? The size of that charge would be 20 Q. Now to get the direction, uh, I look at the signs and I notice that since it's oppositely charged, it would attract and the force would be to the left, right? So the strength of it just goes like K times the size of the first times the size of the second divided by distance squared. And then the direction you can get just by looking at the signs of the charges, right? So the, the upshot is that no matter what kind of a charge I put here, so you know I could, I could just do any little charge called QT that's for like a test charge that I'm gonna put there just to test what's happening at this point. Um, well, then all that happens is I just, whatever that second charge is, I just put it here, okay? Now the key is to notice that what stayed the same here um, when the second charge wasn't even there is just this part, right? This part, this part was kind of like there all the time and then we just, we just put another charge in here and we can get what the force is by multiplying this expression circled in red by whatever charge that we put here, okay? And then we just know that it's um, away if it's a positive charge and toward the thing if it's a negative charge. So here's the interesting thing then. The idea is that, well, if I don't have any charge here at all, right? Like how is it that this, let me back up, how is it that this charge even knows it should feel that charge? So a different model or a different way to approach this is maybe this charge sets something up all around it that's there even before we put this charge here. And then when we do put this charge here, it has to deal with whatever this charge has built, okay? And so the notion is that around this thing, there's something called an electric field. And so the, um, the strength of that electric field will go, that's created by this charge, we'll go like kq over r squared, right? And the idea is that even without this charge there, that there is this electric field that's created at this point that's this big, uh, kq over r squared. And then if we just put a, a, a test charge there, qt, if I happen to slap one down there, then the strength of the force on that charge would just be this thing times that charge. So in other words, the way to get the force on any new charge is just to multiply this thing E times whatever charge I end up putting at that little, at that little spot, okay? So electric field um, times the, the test charge that you put there, the force on any test charge. So that's this concept of electric field. Um, the idea again to figure out which way an electric field points, like say you have, I even put uh, test this point down here, if I were to put a positive charge here that positive charge would get pushed away. So at this point, the electric field is away um, from this charge, and its strength is just given by kq over how far away you are squared, okay? So just to look at a couple little examples of that, maybe draw some, draw some other pictures. Um, let's suppose that we've got uh, just a little negative charge sitting here, right? 
um, we'll say the magnitude of the charge is Q, so I'll call the, the charge, this happens to be minus Q, uh, sitting right here. And then what we're going to do is test at different places, okay? Well, so if, I, if I'm pretty close by here, if I imagine putting a positive charge there, there's going to be a very strong attraction of that positive charge here. So what I would do is I would say the electric field at this point that's created by this charge points this way. Now, if I go a little farther out, um, you know that positive charge is also going to be attracted, but it's not going to be as strong. So it'll be like a smaller arrow. In fact, it'd be like a fourth the size if I'm twice as far away. We'll get to that in a second. Um, and so as I go out farther, this attraction gets really tiny. Okay. So the upshot is no matter where I put a positive charge, it's always going to be attracted and it's going to be attracted more strongly um, the closer that it is. So by imagining how a positive charge would respond around this thing, you can map out what's called the electric field. So you notice the electric field here, I don't wanna get overzealous with this, but it just points inward and it gets um, weaker the farther out that you go. Um, right, so the electric field around a negative charge would look like this because if you put positive charges anywhere around, they get drawn toward it, okay? So the direction comes from just knowing that opposites attract, but so on and, and so on, and you just always pretend that you're using a uh, positive test charge to figure out which way the electric field points. Um, and so with this electric field, so what we've drawn here is called E, the electric field, right? Um, it's the strength of the electric field is just K times Q over R. And then the direction is in the direction that a positive charge would go. In direction that plus charge would go. Okay, so that's the field around a negative charge. It'd look exactly the same around a positive, except for the arrows, directions would just be reversed, um, but it would also be stronger in the center than it would be, or near the middle. Uh, then it would be as you go out. Um, so another little sketch we can make. So that's around a single negative charge. Let's do this around a around a pair of charges. Um, and so if we look, for example, that we have a negative charge over here and a positive charge over here, and what we're going to do is sketch out the direction of the electric field or the map of the electric field around this. So again, what you do is you just pretend to place positive charges at different locations. Well, suppose I put one in the middle. Well, a little baby positive charge, first of all, it wants to get away from that one. So that would be like a push to the left, and it really wants to get toward that one, so that's another push to the left. So the electric field's definitely going to the left here. Um, likewise, if I'm super close to this positive charge, the, um, the electric field it really is gonna point to the left because it wants to not only get away from that positive charge, but get toward this negative one. So your electric field in the middle here uh, is gonna look like this, all to the left, right? Now, if I'm over here, this very close by negative charge is going to attract this thing. So there's gonna be an attraction. Now there would be a small repulsion at this point because of that positive charge but that's not gonna be enough to overcome the attraction. So over here, it's gonna to have to be uh, to the right. We can play the same game here. You put a little po baby positive charge there. Um, yes, that positive charge is slightly attracted to the negative here, but more importantly is it's gonna get driven away or pushed away by this very close by positive charge. So the field in general is away over here, right? Um, so anywhere over here, it's gonna be like a way. It's gonna be weaker, but it's gonna be a way because it'll be a bigger deal if you put a charge here to get away from that one than it will be to get toward that one. Um, I'm gonna point this way here. Now we can kind of check some intermediate places. Like suppose you're here. If you're here, yeah, there's a slight attraction toward the negative charge, but the bigger priority will be to get the heck away from this guy. And so if you add those two vectors together, right, you'll get something that's kind of like this. So slightly, not directly away from this one, but like slightly away. Um, and we can continue to fill this in. If you, if you check like a, in the midpoint here, there would be an um, attraction toward the negative, 
but, but a repulsion from the positive this way. And so the net effect would be an arrow like this, right, to the, to the left. Well, so what you can start to do, if you just then draw in all these arrows, what you can start to realize is that you, if you're near the net positive charge, it's gonna flow away. So one way that people will draw these is they'll just kind of connect all the arrows like this, so the field goes away. Likewise here, you would wanna go away from the positive charge and wrap around and come toward the negative charge. For symmetry, we'll draw it up here like that too. Right? Um, notice if you were here, by the way, you would wanna get very much repelled by that positive charge with a very slight attraction toward the negative. Um, so again, the vector sum of those two is gonna be very far away like this. And so just for completeness, maybe I'll, well, I'll draw like another loop of this. So charges would wanna go away from this thing, but then this, what's called the electric field line would wrap around and come back in like this. Um, and we can, by symmetry, we can do the same thing up here. Right, and then realize over here, the field line is gonna come in and over here, it's gonna go away. If you're just barely off center here, right? The field line would go away, I mean, go out to Jupiter, okay? But then come around and then eventually swoop around and come back, right? So this is the field um, around a, a pair of opposite charges. This happens to be called a dipole, all right? So again, we see these two messages about the um, electric field uh, strength. Well, first, or electric field, first of all, it points in the direction that positive charge would go. So that's one thing about the electric field. And then the other thing is, you notice we were taking these, these vector sums of the, of the two charges. So the strength from each charge or the contribution from each charge is KQ over R squared, right? That's the strength from each charge. Okay, but you have to add like vectors. So for example, we, we did this point down here, this positive charge, right? The field strength that it makes down here, pointing this way or repelling away, this would be, if we call this Q1 and Q2, the strength of this would be KQ2 divided by this radius squared, divided by R2 squared, right? And then the strength of this attractive component here, or the field caused by this one, this would be KQ1 over R1 squared. And what you have to do is add those two things together like vectors to get the resultant, okay? So that's how these things work, they're vector sums, right? So that's the electric field ar ar around these points. You just, again, look at which direction a positive charge would get pushed if you put it um, in that location. Um, and so, so this is the electric field around what's called a, a dipole. Final comment about this, if you go back to the previous example, um, something I didn't mention while we were there, is we drew this um, map of the field around a negative charge in the, in the previous example, and we had, we had drawn these, all these different arrows like this. Now here realize that the direction, of course, is represented by the direction of the arrow, and the strength is represented by the, uh, the length or the size of the arrow. Another way to draw these, okay, so you might want to just add this in the corner by the top, the, another way to draw these things, is you can, um, you can just actually kind of connect all these arrows, and then, and, and then what happens is you end up drawing it kind of like this, the electric field, Now what's happening is, you know, here we're representing the strength by the length of the arrow and the direction's obvious. Here the direction's obvious. The strength is represented by the proximity of the field lines. Like notice these lines are closer together. So here you represent the strength um, is shown by the density of the field lines.
And in this representation, the strength is shown by the length of the arrows. Right. So those are just some different ways to draw the electric field. Points in the direction that a positive charge would go. And the strength of it goes like kq over r squared. Right on. Hope that helps.